Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technology Tuesday, hosted by Out of the Box Technology. We are excited to bring you these free webinars featuring third-party apps, tips and tricks from in and outside of QuickBooks, and hot topics that our industry is encountering. My name is Jennifer, and I will be your moderator today. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to send those over to me using the question chat function on your GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll be happy to answer those at the end of the session. A little bit about out-of-the-box technology, if you aren't familiar with us. We are a company with several consultants that specialize in QuickBooks training, integration, hosting, and support. We also have several bookkeepers on staff that offer excellent bookkeeping services and a whole team of developers that are awesome in website design, custom app development, and data migrations. Recently, one of our products, Recur360, received a great honor and were featured in CFO Tech Outlook magazine as a top solution for billing and invoicing. We're really excited about this. If you haven't seen it yet, um, you'll see a link in the follow-up email to today's session. You can read the whole article um, that was written by our co-founders, Andrew and Lisa. Speaking of Andrew, we have him on the line today. We're really excited that he's going to join us and do this presentation on Locate Inventory. Locate um, is a company that we have built a relationship with over the last year, and we're really excited to be working with them and to bring to you a demonstration of their product today. So with that, Andrew, I'm going to make you the presenter, and you can take it away. Great. Uh, let's see. Got it on kind of a large screen. Can you see that okay, Jennifer? Yeah, it looks great. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to go over today is a program called Locate Inventory. And Locate is a... Um, order management, inventory management, procurement, sales, uh, web-based software um, that pretty much replaces doing all of those functions in QuickBooks. Um, so normally inside of your QuickBooks, you would have your items list with all of your inventory items in it. Uh, you'd have your customers, uh, you would create estimates, sales orders, do invoicing, Basically, normally in QuickBooks, you would be using all of this functionality. But there's times where QuickBooks is not adequate for those kind of things. Um, mainly if you do a lot of online sales um, and need to connect into Amazon and Shopify and eBay and Walmart and all these other services. Um, <clears throat> if you were to use QuickBooks, you'd have to subscribe to a lot of add-on software like Webgility Unify or Tundra T-Hub or various other things out there. Or you might have different connectors for every uh, shopping cart that you might use. Um, and then if you're doing manufacturing, QuickBooks really doesn't have a manufacturing module. Um, it does have assemblies in it, uh, but it doesn't have a separate model to do manufacturing or work orders. So QuickBooks is kind of light on that, um, even if you have assemblies in it, which hopefully I'll get to in just a moment. Um, where you would normally go to vendors and, um, you know, build assemblies. So what Locate does is let's turn all of that off in QuickBooks. Let's use QuickBooks just for an accounting package. Let's just use it for our profit and loss, our balance sheet. Um, and instead of creating every single transaction and tracking every piece of inventory in QuickBooks, let's not do it. Let's do it in a, a more evolved program that's web-based running on Amazon Web Services, and then has direct web integrations uh, to all of the software packages that you want to integrate with. So when we bring on a program like Locate, essentially what we do is we zero out your inventory, we inactivate all of your items um, so that you're not tracking them in QuickBooks. Uh, we then also turn off um, estimates sales orders, purchasing, so that all of these functions are turned off. Uh, and then you're just using QuickBooks as your GL, paying your bills and doing your payroll. So that's kind of staging the change is that not all of your data is gonna be in QuickBooks, it's gonna be up in Locate, and you also get better reporting there on the front end. So what is Locate? So Locate is a web-based uh, order management system, 
purchasing system, manufacturing system, and inventory management system. You're gonna do all of your picking, packing, shipping, receiving within Locate. Uh, and then at the end of the day, it's gonna send the value of what you did over into QuickBooks in the form of journal entries, uh, in some cases invoices if people owe you money. But if a lot of your orders are coming from shopping carts and they're paid in advance from the cart, the value of that sale is just journalized into QuickBooks, meaning not every sale you do is gonna end up in QuickBooks, which is great for companies that do hundreds or thousands of transactions a day or people that do a lot of um, Black Friday or Cyber Monday business. All those orders are prepaid when they're placed. They don't need to be in QuickBooks. All QuickBooks needs to know is what was the value of the revenue, the cost of goods sold and the inventory asset. And so that's what Locate does is it sums all of that up into a daily journal entry. Unless people owe you money, like if you're doing wholesale and then it'll send a wholesale invoice over. Uh, so that's kind of the back end of, of what will end up in QuickBooks. I'm just going to go over kind of a, a start to finish life cycle of an order and locate um, and how it'll then ultimately end up in QuickBooks. And uh, before I do that, though, um, one of the added benefits to locate is they don't charge for the additional add ons to shopping carts. They don't charge for their mobile warehousing app, which I'll show on my iPhone. All of that's included in their package. Um, what they charge for is just a monthly uh, per user license cost. It's $100 a user a month with a minimum of $500, so minimum of five users. And then that can expand to 60, 70, 80 users, depending on how large your uh, operation is. Um, and then inside of QuickBooks, you don't need as many users in QuickBooks. You can downsize your QuickBooks license. You could potentially go to QuickBooks Online. So we're basically the shifting where you're paying your money to be in QuickBooks, where it may not be giving you all the features you need, downsizing your QuickBooks and then putting you into a more robust package like Locate. And then you're paying them just for monthly access, but then they're not charging you anything additional for the add-ons like shopping cart integrations or shipping integrations. So with Locate, if I go into my sales module, I'll see all of my customers. Uh, if I go into a particular customer, it will show me order history. So things that I've quoted them, orders that they've placed. Uh, I can see their customer details. Uh, we can store multiple addresses. So phone numbers, email addresses, physical addresses. I can go into their order history, see if they've had any orders in there. I'll go into one that has some detail in it. So I can look at all their previous sales orders, all their previous invoices. Um, we've got a returns module, which QuickBooks doesn't have. QuickBooks has credit memos. Locate allows you to create return authorizations off of existing sales orders. And then once you receive them in, it issues a credit memo that would go against their accounts um, receivable. It's a slight uh, lightweight uh, CRM system, similar to a Salesforce, where a customer account could have multiple contacts inside of it. Um, and then you get reporting, uh, all the customer address lists or sales to a particular customer. Now within a customer, we can define customer specific parts and what they pay for it. So in QuickBooks, you can define price levels that are rules that you would apply to one or more customers and one or more items. And Locate has price rules as well under the rules. But you can also load a catalog of parts into a customer record with that customer's part number that they sell it to their end customers. So you have that alias cross-reference and then the, what they buy it from you at. So anytime I sell to Alan's rest, Raceway with one of these parts, he'll always pay this unless I offer an additional discount. And so that capability doesn't exist in QuickBooks where you can define customer specific part um, part number and prices. Um, we can add a customer to multiple groups. So in QuickBooks, you have um, a customer type within a customer and a customer can only belong to one customer type. So if I look at Candy Walker here and I look at additional info, if I were gonna try to organize her, she can only belong to one customer type. Well, in Locate, I can add her to multiple groups 
Um, and that allows me to do some different kind of reporting. Maybe she's a wholesale customer, but she's in the pet food industry versus in the, um, you know, general grocery stores. But I might sell to both because I sell pet food to pet stores and I sell pet food to grocery stores. Well, I could have two different groups in here and it would allow me to track sales based on those groups. QuickBooks doesn't make it very easy to do something like that because you can only be in one customer type. And then we can have children customers. So these are um, like if you're selling to like a Whole Foods corporate and then they have um, Whole Foods individual stores, those would be child customers in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's say we wanna sell something to Brett Queen. So I'm gonna pull Brett up and I'm gonna go ahead and just check that we have uh, data on him. So we have some address data, great. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a quote to Brett. This is kind of like an estimate in QuickBooks. Um, and I'm just gonna get my basics in here that you know, if we're gonna ship it through FedEx and I'm gonna set myself as the salesperson. And we're gonna go ahead and go find the part that I wanna sell him. So I wanna sell him a hybrid bike perhaps. I can see I have 63 in my Arizona warehouse and this is the pricing we're gonna offer it to him at. Um, now I could go ahead and I could reserve this inventory so that nobody else can sell it. That's something you can't do in QuickBooks. There's actually no pick pack or ship module in QuickBooks that shows where inventory movement is from the time you create the sales order to the time you invoice it for. And a lot of times you have orders that might sit for a couple days or that you need to stage for larger orders. Well, Locate allows you to reserve the inventory so that nobody else can sell it, let alone physically pick it within the system. I could add discounts or fees. Um, so maybe they wanted to do um, some bulk deal with us and we can do a line item discount. You can't line item discount in QuickBooks either. You can put a discount under a line item um, or you could do a subtotal and throw a discount in. Locate allows you to do line item discounts or entire order discounts or order fees, uh, which is nice. And then while I'm in here, I can see what my margin is, uh, which is uh, very important to make sure that you're selling things and making money on it. Uh, so from here, I could go ahead and uh, print my quote report. And because Locate is web-based, I can connect it right into my Office 365 email or Google Mail or whatever mail server you use. And then I can just email this report right out of Locate. Now, similar to an estimate in QuickBooks is once somebody wants to um, complete an order, uh, we can go ahead and either pull them up from within the quotes module um, or from within a customer, I can see that he's got one proposed order and I can click on here and see just his orders. And then I can go back into that order and if he wants to approve it, I can go, you know what, let's go ahead and change the status to one. Um, and that will automatically convert that quote into a sales order. And it will automatically issue that order to go into production. Uh, and by issuing it, I mean um, it's something that is gonna proceed forward as opposed to an unissued order which might be something that you're building and you're not ready to finalize yet. Once you issue the order, now it starts allocating inventory in the system. So when you look at something like on-hand inventory, let's say I had five on hand, once I issue it and I have one of them, it now says I have four available for sale. So it's now changing my available based on allocating this one to the order. So if I go into my actions, I can go ahead and say, pick a sale, pick the sales order. So I can do this from directly in the order, um, or I could go to my picking module and it would show me orders that are available to pick, okay? And so this sales order is sales order 59. Now something else I can do um, is I can use the mobile app that comes with Locate, um, which is free on the Apple App Store. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into my Locate app on my iPhone, which is called um, Locate Warehouse, by the way, it's right here. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, refresh. And a few things that I can do in here, I can do cycle counts, I can move inventory around, I can pick, I can pack, um, I can look up parts, and I can see what we have on hand of a particular part and where it is. Um, and because this is running on my iPhone, it's either going through my local Wi-Fi or my cellular. 
So if I'm in a completely different state in another warehouse, I can still see what's going on and what we have on hand at any point in time. QuickBooks with advanced inventory now has a mobile app, but it doesn't easily let you check status or do picking and packing unless somebody within QuickBooks goes into the sales order fulfillment worksheet and initiates it. Well, in Locate, I can simply go home, I can go to my picking module, and I can say new pick, um, and it's gonna show me the orders that are fulfillable. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab order 59, okay? And then um, you'll notice here that I've got a, a, a picture scanner. So if this was sitting inside of a barcode scanner, similar like if you've gone to the Apple store, it uses Linea Pro devices um, that uh, an iPod um, can fit into. Let me just pull up the Linea Pro. Um, so these are the kind of scanners that you would use and they're readily available on eBay or Amazon. Um, typically the price range is a couple hundred dollars. Uh, so you can get an iPod, put it in here, um, and then if you want to click on scan, um, this is going to go through my camera. So it would actually use my camera app to scan a barcode, okay? Um, and then I would scan this. So it does full barcode scanning, um, and if you're tracking serial or lot numbers, it does that on a part-by-part -part basis, uh, where in QuickBooks it does it kind of as a global setting. You're either doing serial or lot, you can't do both. Locate allows you to choose on a part by part basis. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick this and I'd either scan it once or if it was multiple, I would scan it multiple times. The location is it's telling me where in the warehouse I need to go pick it. So if you're doing row shelf and bin, we can track all of that inside of Locate as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and commit this pick, okay? And then I'm gonna say we're done, everything is picked. So now the next stage is I could go into my packing um, and I could do a new pack and I would see that that order is um, picked in full and it's packable. Now, one of the nice things about Locate is it integrates with other shipping services, like if you use ShipStation or if you want to use UPS and FedEx. Um, and at this point, I could do a couple different things. I can pack it in Locate and then go and ship it in Locate. Or I could go into ShipStation and I could go ahead and sync that order into ShipStation. Um, and then in ShipStation, go ahead and uh, complete it, and then it'll send it back into Locate that it was done. So if I go into my orders in ShipStation, um, and I go to awaiting payment, I now see this order in my ShipStation. Uh, and so then in ShipStation, I can do all of my shipping. And if you guys aren't familiar with ShipStation, it's a web-based shipping platform that aggregates all of your shipping. You could have UPS, FedEx, United States Postal Service, DHL, you could have some other um, light freight carriers. Um, and so it allows you to manage your shipping through a web interface, or you could use UPS World Ship or FedEx Ship Manager installed locally on your computers. So assuming I went through this entire order in ShipStation, what it essentially would do back in Locate is it would automatically um, pack the order, so I'll just walk it through here. So it would automatically pack the order. And if we're adding any shipping information, like shipping costs, let's say I'm adding $10 onto the order and we're writing back a tracking number, it would write that back as well. Um, and then it would auto ship the order. And then at the end of the day, what's nice is we have what's called pickup. So when you're dealing with UPS or FedEx, they typically come once a day, load up the truck, and we can take a look at all of our um, uh, carriers and see how many packages are waiting to go. And once this order is picked up, now it completes it in the system. And by completing it in the system, um, it creates an invoice in Locate. Uh, if somebody owes you money, you would send that to them and collect payment on it. So I'll go ahead and pull up the invoice in Locate. And this is essentially what I'm sending the customer. Now we can create some automatic rules in here where it automatically prints and it automatically emails. In QuickBooks, that's a manual process. You have to mark it to be printed or to be emailed. You then have to go print it, choose your printer, or you have to go into send forms and then email it later. Well, in Locate, it can automate all of those, um, those documents to print in your warehouse or to email the customer at various stages of the order. 
Uh, so the automation that comes with Locate is pretty powerful that you don't have to convert a sales order to an invoice like you do in QuickBooks and then email or print it. Once you mark your orders and picked up, it will automatically do all of that for you. So now you might be asking, well, how does that end up in QuickBooks? Well, if I look at each order um, when it gets invoiced, I can see what the effect is going to be accounting wise. So I can see it's going to go ahead and uh, post some accounts receivable into Locate for the cost of the product as well as the shipping. And then it's going to post income to sales as well as shipping income. And with QuickBooks Desktop, we sync it based on the QuickBooks Web Connector. This also connects into QuickBooks Online directly through the API. So I'm gonna go ahead and run my QuickBooks Web Connector in QuickBooks, and it's gonna look for everything that's in the accounting that's waiting to sync. So if I go into my Ledger and Locate, um, I'll see everything that's waiting to post to QuickBooks. And once it posts over, it'll tell me what transaction it went over in. So in just a moment, we'll see um, this transaction go over as locate invoice 59, okay? Um, so once this is completed, if I go look in my transaction center and I go to invoices, we'll see this pop in in just a moment once it's finished completing its sync. So you're gonna send your invoices out of locate, but you're still gonna use QuickBooks as your accounting system, meaning this person owes me money. So when I go into QuickBooks, I can pull up this invoice and I can receive payment against it. And then it'll write that payment back to locate. But if the customer wants a copy of that invoice resent to them, you would go into locate, go to the invoice and send it out of here. So while locate is your invoicing system, QuickBooks is still your accounting system and your AR system unless orders are prepaid, in which case you would process a payment before um, uh, you put it into production like if it came from a website. So if I go over into that invoice in QuickBooks, if I pull up order 59 here, or 56, excuse me, in this particular one, all that it's sending to QuickBooks is some very uh, basic information, just enough to populate the invoice with a dollar value. Okay, and then it's also sending over a combined journal entry for cost of goods sold and inventory assets. If I look at my profit and loss for today, and I click on my cost of goods sold, I can see that there's gonna be one journal entry um, that's gonna have everything that I've done for the day on it so far. And so Locate keeps building and updating and adjusting this journal entry until the end of the day. And then tomorrow it'll send over another journal entry and it'll be Locate Journal Entry 29. So instead of me sending thousands of orders to QuickBooks, which really bulk up and slow down your QuickBooks, now I'm just sending a journal entry that does all my backend accounting. And then for customers that owe me money, an invoice that takes care of the revenue. So if I look at this invoice back in, in Locate, I can see that, you know, there's a balance due on it. Uh, when that person pays me, I can receive payment in QuickBooks. You could still use Intuit payments in QuickBooks to process a payment against this order. I'm just going to say they're paying by a check. Okay. And then once I do that, the next time that the web sync runs, and I'm going to go ahead and manually do it, but you could set this to run like every 30 minutes. You could set it to run once a day. As soon as this is done syncing, we're gonna see that this will automatically update on its own to show you that it was paid. So whether you're using QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop, whatever you do in QuickBooks, receiving payments wise automatically syncs back to locate so that you don't have to worry about keeping uh, the two systems in check from uh, an accounts receivable standpoint. So, if you saw the flicker here, this came in as paid and this automatically marked as paid. Now I can also go look at some um, reporting. So I could go look at a, a customer statement um, and I could look at any particular customer and run a report and it basically gives me their AR aging from a locate standpoint. So I could see every order that we process through the system and this tells me what they owe me and what their aging is. And this would match QuickBooks if all these orders originated out of Locate and went into your QuickBooks. So it allows your sales staff 
to not go into QuickBooks to look at AR aging. They can manage it from here, and then they could click on any one of these documents um, and then re-email it to the customer to, connect, to collect payment. But then your bookkeeping people or your AR people, when they receive that in QuickBooks, it'll come back and, and update in here. So that's kind of the life cycle of a sale to a completed order um, using maybe a program like ShipStation for shipping and how it ends up in QuickBooks. Now on the purchasing side, um, we can go into our parts um, and in any given part, um, similar to what we looked at on, a, on a, a customer basis, I can see what customers have bought parts or this particular part. It gives me some demographics on how much they've purchased from me, the top vendors I've purchased it from, as well as um, a graph of sales um, for this particular item. So parts sold and parts purchased. I can see what I have on hand and where it is, what's available for sale, what's available to pick, which is what's less, or the difference between available for sale and what's already been allocated or committed. And I can also see what's on order. Um, within a particular part, I can say what vendors I buy it from. Uh, in QuickBooks, if you go into a part, you can only choose one default vendor. So if I wanted to order this part from somebody, I can only choose one preferred vendor and what the order cost is. In Locate, I can say, well, from Brent's Bicycles, it costs me this. From Burton's Better Bikes, um, this is their part number, this is my lead time and, and what their pricing is on it. So if you buy the same product from multiple vendors, you can manage all of that in Locate. You can't do that in QuickBooks. It is a feature that they plan on adding to QuickBooks. Um, but it's, it won't be as robust as this is. And then you can also see what customer parts this part is linked to and what their customer part number is. So back on the customer side, we were looking at Alan's Raceway and we saw that uh, he had this customer partner and this was his number and price. Uh, on details, we can also define if you uh, drop ship this part, you can say it's always drop shipped or optionally drop shipped and who the default vendor is. So if there's inventory parts that you never stock and you never touch, but you still need to track them, you would set them up as drop ship. Um, and then when you create a sales order, it will automatically do the drop ship. And when you receive, it'll automatically receive a bill into the system and auto invoice the customer. Um, and I can show that in a little bit. If I go into my inventory on a part, again, I see everywhere that it is. And if I go into the inventory, I can look at my costing layers um, and it'll show me each time that I've received it, what was my cost layer and landed costs. So this is a feature you don't get in QuickBooks directly is if I purchase something, my cost is my per unit price on the cost. But if I wanna add freight in and I wanna spread that over the cost of the items, it will take that and add it to the value of the inventory and that's called landed cost. And so if I take a look at one that's in here, if I go look at this receipt, um, what I can see is um, it came from this particular purchase order. Uh, and on that purchase order, if I go into what we call the reconcile, which is the bill that goes to QuickBooks, I can see that we brought in shipping um, and applied that $100 in shipping against these 600 parts. So it took the build cost of $5.13 and took the cost and landed to it, or took the cost of the shipping and landed it. So it increased my cost of my item to be $5.29. And so that becomes the landed cost on the part. Um, and so that's real important when you, um, purchase a lot of inventory and you want your shipping charges to be a part of your asset value and then roll into costs of goods sold rather than them just being a shipping charge on your profit and loss. And again, when I'm inside of my inventory, I can see my cost layers and we're using FIFO. So the oldest cost layer is what's gonna go out of the system first. So the next time I sell this, it's gonna go out at that 529. Um, the once all of these are 
uh, sold or consumed in builds and whatnot, then the, you know, the final cost layer currently would be the 539. And this came in from a work order because we built it. So you get a, a lot of data in the system from inventory management and costing and manufacturing that, that you don't have in QuickBooks or a lot of other systems. If we look at adjustments, I can go ahead and adjust inventory. I can add inventory in here, meaning I didn't purchase it and receive it, but maybe um, I had uh, one in stock that wasn't on the books. I could add it this way. Um, if I needed to adjust my inventory, like a cycle count, um, I could say we're going to adjust up and I could go into a stock location um, and then I can choose an adjustment quantity. Um, I can do stock moves so I can see I've got um, 200 in stock 200 here. So instead of stock 100, if I was going to do an adjustment there, like a cycle count, um, I can adjust it there or I can move it from one location to another. And if it got damaged, I can scrap it out of here. Uh, so you get a lot of uh, capability of movement with the part, not only from quantity to value, but if it got damaged, we can scrap it and give it a reason. Now we can also set reorder points. So you can set a reorder point per site. Um, you can set it um, based on mins and maxes overall for the company. Um, and then if I look at my activity, I can see everything that's ever happened to that part and page through it. Uh, so this is really important because if you're trying to figure out, wait, I thought I had this part, why isn't it in my warehouse? I can go see that it was sold or moved. So we get a lot of really powerful information um, on everything that's happened inventory wise to a part. So if I wanna order this part again, I can go ahead and uh, create a purchase order. And I can say, you know, let's go order 200 of these. And now it's gonna create a new PO on the books and it's gonna grab the default vendor that I have set uh, at the parts. So if you remember back at my parts, if I go to manage my customer and vendor parts, um, we've got Rocky Mountain parts in here. And so um, I've got that defined as the default vendor so that's who it created this PO to, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and issue the PO um, and I could automatically have that email to the vendor uh, or I could go place that order online uh, or I could manually pull up the PO and I could email that off to the vendor. And once it's issued, then it's um, gonna be sitting and receiving. So if I go into my receiving, um, it'll be waiting in here to be received. Um, or if I go back into my mobile app, again, when that product comes in uh, on my mobile app, I can go to home and I can go into receiving and I can look at what's inbound and I see that that PO is inbound. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. I'm gonna say we're receiving that in. Now I could receive less than 200. Let's say we've got an incomplete shipment. So I'm gonna put down that we got 100. I'm gonna go ahead and receive that. There's still 50 out there, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish this receipt, okay? And those 50 are gonna sit on a back order. Now, if I go back into my purchase order and refresh it, I can look on the operations tab of the PO and I can see that um, the, a receipt came in. And if I go look at that receipt, I can see that there were only 150 on it. We originally ordered 200, only 150 were received. And so then back on the front of the PO, um, we can see that this was partial, that 150 came in out of the 200, okay? Now what's happening is it's sitting in a put away location. So if I go to put away, I'll see that these are waiting here to be moved from my receiving location into stock. But before I put it away, we wanna reconcile it. So if we go into our accounting and we go to reconcile, I can see that that PO is waiting here to be reconciled. So this is like in QuickBooks where if you had an item receipt and you were converting it to a bill, this is where we would do that and locate. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on reconcile. So I've got my 150 of the 200 that I ordered, I received 150 and it was at an order cost of 539 and that's my total build cost. 
here's where landed cost comes into play. So I can land the cost of the shipping by quantity, volume, weight, um, or I could just bring in shipping on its own and not land it. In this case, I'm gonna say for those 150 parts, they charged us uh, $56 in shipping. So I'm gonna choose my shipping part. It's on the bill, meaning the bill that they sent me for the parts has the shipping on it, but I could say no, and it could be on a separate bill, like from a different freight carrier. And here's where I'm gonna put in that shipping cost. And because we're landing it, I'm gonna go ahead and add that. And now what it's done is it's taken the build cost, it's landing the shipping cost. Um, and when I complete this, it'll put it in as a landed cost. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the reconcile. Okay, so now it's landed that from 539 to 582. And again, if I go look back at my part and I go to inventory and I go to my costing layer, I'll now see that as um, one of the latest costing layers. Okay, so it's down at the bottom here. That's the next costing layer at the bottom of my layers. The first one to go out will be this one, and now this brings it into my inventory for the 150 at 582, and that was the amount per item that got landed. So now that I've reconciled it, here's where I can go into my put away, and if we have a default location assigned to a part, so if I go to my parts uh, and I go to manage um, my um, my customer vendor parts or my account mappings, I can define where in accounting it sits, but I can also define uh, where the default site is for this. So it's stock 200. So when I go into my put away, it already has that ready to go. So I can do a quick move and it'll automatically take it from receiving and put it into stock 200. Um, or I can move it to an assigned location, okay? Or I can go ahead and on my mobile app again, I can go into put away. My screen, there we go, let's go back in here. So go to home and we'll do a refresh. So once this is done refreshing, it would allow me to find um, that order and then do a quick move in here since my uh, app is not responding i'm gonna go ahead and log out and log back in okay so now that i've refreshed it uh, in my app, I can go ahead and say, let's go ahead and just put that away. And we can either do the move inventory like we see on the screen or the quick move to stock 200, um, or I could choose another location to move it into. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the quick move. Okay. And so back on my dashboard, I'll see that that's out of here. And if I uh, go back into my part module or my stock module, for instance, if I wanna go look at inventory, and I go look at B200. Okay, um, I now see that I've got all that on hand and where it is. So that's uh, purchasing and receiving. So the, the next thing in Locate is manufacturing. So we can create a bill of materials that defines um, either taking one component or multiple components and, and building another one, or taking an existing component and doing some sort of um, work to it, like if you were powder coating or painting or, or just building. So within each one of these, you can have pretty elaborate bill of materials, um, or you could make them pretty simple. So um, the best way to do this is, um, let's say I want to create a new bill of material. Uh, I can do new bill of material. Um, and let's just say we're going to build a new bike, perhaps. And it can auto number it, or we can call it B01234 if we want. And then we can give it a description. Can you bike? Okay. 
And then we have to add some inputs. So we could go ahead and say, you know, I'm gonna add a chain. We're gonna add one of those. I'm gonna add a seat or some handlebars. Let's see if we have those parts in here. So we'll add one of those. We'll add some wheels, uh, tires maybe. So we'll put two mountain tires on it, okay? And then we have to choose what an output is gonna be. So, okay, so let's say we're doing a, a custom bike and we're gonna yield one of those, okay? So these are my inputs. I need one of each of these to yield this output. Um, and then now I have my bill of materials. So there are a couple of things because this is gonna be linked to the BB2004. In my details on here, I can edit that part and say it's backlinked to the bill of materials. And I can set a build type, build when short or build always. Um, or I could just build it on its own and not link it. So if I were to go sell this bike and if it was chosen as build always, it will automatically create a work order to build that bike. So I'm gonna say this is build always, okay? And now if I go ahead and create a new sales order with the BB2004 on it, when I issue it, it's gonna go ahead and create a work order for it. Uh, so I'm gonna put the BB2004 on here. Okay, so we're gonna sell one of those, all right. So now if I go ahead and issue this order, uh, that's fine. See this little wrench came up? That tells me that it's associated to a work order. So it automatically created a work order with this bill of materials on it to go ahead and build this bike and consume these parts. Now, in order for me to build it, I have to go ahead and um, go into pick the work order. And so when I go into picking, I have all these parts. Now, again, um, if I'm using my mobile app here, uh, I could go into picking um, and I could do a new pick and I can see that work order is there. Um, and it's gonna have me, uh, actually, that's a, that's a different work order. What work order are we on? Uh, this is work order 31. So let's go grab work order 31 right here. And it's gonna show me everything we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the chain. Yeah, I got that. Pick the handlebars. Yeah, I got that. Pick the mountain tires. Yeah, I've got that. I'm gonna go ahead and finish my pick. Okay. So if I refresh back at my production desk, I can see that that pick is completed. Okay. And then if I go back to my work orders, and we go back into work order 31, now it's ready to yield. And by ready to yield means it's ready to put into stock. So I'm gonna go ahead and yield this work order, okay? And by doing so, um, that part is now in my stock. So if I go to the BB2004, um, and I go look at my inventory, I'll see that it's there. And now if I go back to my sales order, I'll see that it's pickable. So if I wanna go ahead and um, do a new pick, um, and we go back into Derek Drake, and we take a look at his orders. Okay, that was on order 60. I see that that is now fulfillable on my mobile app. So I can grab that, I'm gonna go ahead and pick it. Okay, I'm gonna finish my pick. The packing person can then take it over. So now I'm gonna go pack that order, I'm look for available new packs. <clears throat> I can see that's picked in full. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the pack. Okay, and now I'll be able to see that in my shipping. Uh, so if I go into shipping, I see this is shippable. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. Oop, excuse me. I'm gonna go ahead and click on create shipment. And then now I can go ahead and um, 
go through, in this case, I'm not using ShipStation, but if I were using UPS or FedEx, um, I can edit the carton details. And again, we can add in the tracking number information here. The cost, let's say this is gonna be $50 to ship out. And now it's sitting in my put away or my pickup location for the end of the day. So at the end of the day, when FedEx comes, I'll just say that this is picked up. And now that order is completed. Uh, so if I look at my operations and I go look at the invoice, it'll also have the shipping on it. And then, like I said, I can manually print and email this or print it and mail it, uh, email it or have it automatically be emailed. So now if I look back at my parts, I can look at part history to see, you know, the, uh, the actions on the part. So we can look at an audit to see anything that happened to the makeup of the part in the system. Um, we can go look at a part fulfillment summary based on a date range. So we could go ahead and look at the current month. Right, and we could run that report. Actually, let me remove that filter. and just run it based on the current month. And it'll tell me, you know, who this was sold to when it went out. Okay, I can look at a bunch of other reports. So if I wanna see um, current uh, orders on my dashboard, I can say, let's see everything that's happening this week based on the date it was issued. So I can run a report there and it's gonna show me all my open orders and where they are in progress, um, whether they've been completed or issued. Um, so there's a whole slew of reporting in here based on sales and manufacturing um, that, again, QuickBooks doesn't have it because it doesn't go to this detail. And I won't get too deep on the, on the, uh, the reports that are in here, but it, it's got quite a few in there. Uh, we can look at gross profit. Let's look at gross profit for today. Um, so again, reports, you don't have to go into QuickBooks to run because it's gonna tell me this is the amount of money I made today based on our sales for product and shipping and then cost of goods sold. So it's got light accounting to it, but your final accounting is when it hits over at QuickBooks, once everything from the ledger has posted over, um, which again, if I go back into my web connector and desktop and run a sync, um, it will then bring all of that data into my profit and loss. So we are extremely fond of Locate Inventory. Um, we've been partners with them for over a decade. The company that wrote them is a company called um, FishBooks Pro. They used to do a lot of fishbowl consulting and integrations and customizations. And about six years ago, they decided, hey, we can just write our own software, make it more modern and web-based. And last year when we were in the uh, Intuit $100,000 app showdown, um, they were also uh, one of the top 10 new apps along with our app Recur, where Locate was in it. Um, and since then we've been selling Locate and implementing it and migrating people to it from other platforms such as QuickBooks Enterprise or Fishbowl Inventory or Intact or other products that people have been using um, for the last years. But all those products are desktop based and this being web based just makes it more modern and flexible um, and able to scale with the growth of your business. Uh, so with that, that is essentially my demo. Um, if anybody has any specific questions that they um, would like me to show them, please go ahead and ask it within the questions pane. Um, and then I can do a, a deep dive into any of those things. Um, I'll wait a few minutes for that. Um, and otherwise, that's our presentation for today's Tech Tuesday. Thanks, Andrew. I appreciate that. Um, at this time, I don't see any questions, but like you said, um, oh, here we go. One just came in. Um, John is asking, can you show the Amazon Web Store? Sure. So um, I don't have this connected to an Amazon Web Store, uh, but if I go into my services, um, these are where all I have my services defined, okay? So like for ShipStation, um, it's got a bunch of parameters in here for how ShipStation needs to read data out of Locate. Uh, for WooCommerce, which is inactive right now, I'd have to go into WooCommerce and activate their REST API 
and then plug in the URL and all that information in here. So if I wanted to add Amazon Web Services, I would just go ahead and create a new service for e-commerce. Um, and I would choose uh, Amazon FBA. Um, and go ahead and save it. So then um, we just need to define all of the settings for Amazon FBA on how we want these orders to come in to locate. Um, and then what we can do is go ahead and sync the service. Um, and now this isn't going to sync because I don't have it connected to anything, but it would go ahead and log into Amazon and bring all the orders into locate once we put in the authentication token and all of that stuff. And then you would schedule a sync for how frequently you want it um, to go to Amazon. So if we wanted to, you know, hit Amazon at 15 past the hour every hour, then that's when it's going to sync into Amazon. If I wanted to sync with Amazon um, every minute, it's just going to do a constant sync with Amazon and constantly bring those orders into locate based on how we define it in here. And if you have multiple Amazon accounts, we could just add it as two different services. So where a lot of systems um, only allow you to integrate uh, with a platform once, here I can create separate instances of it. Um, like if I'm running different divisions of my business and they each have their own Amazon stores. And likewise, I can do that with other shopping carts as well. So there's integrations with 3D Cart, Big Commerce, Magento, which is one of the big ones, and obviously Shopify, as well as WooCommerce. Uh, and so with each one of these, they just have their own, uh, you know, cart specific settings that once you go through and activate it, like with Shopify, it uses what's called OAuth. Um, so this would actually allow, ask me to connect it directly to Shopify, Shopify through their OAuth rather than me plugging in like a username and a password along with the website. Then once you have all those defined based on your workflow, you know, you can decide how you want orders to come in. So if I wanted to come in and auto issue it, I would say yes. Uh, if I want to use the Shopify or the Amazon order numbers, my sales order number, I could set that to yes. And then, like I said, for each store, there's a whole bunch of different settings. Then those orders will automatically come into my sales orders module. And I'll see in the dashboard here if it came from one of my websites as opposed to manually being entered by one of our sales reps. Unfortunately, we don't have an Amazon web store, so I can't connect it to show you that. Um, but I did show you how it works with ShipStation, where ShipStation brings the orders in from Locate. Am Amazon and Locate is the reverse. Locate brings the Amazon orders into Locate from Amazon, and you would then see them presented in Locate, kind of like you see them here in ShipStation. Once you ship out orders, it will then write back to the shopping cart that it was shipped and the tracking information and whatnot so that people that order through Amazon, they'll get their Amazon notification with the tracking information automatically. So all of that read and write is in there, whether you're on Amazon or Shopify or what have you. Other questions? Uh, nope, we don't have any other questions. Again, I'll just give it a couple of minutes. Um, Andrew, I do, want you to address, if you don't mind, if anyone on the line today or who's watching the recording is interested in moving forward with Locate, what steps for them? Yes, yeah, so we can um, set up a demo of Locate specific to your business where we can review you know, what your business does, um, what it is that you sell, all the platforms you sell on, all the integrations that you integrate through, um, and then put together a detailed quote for you um, on what it would cost to migrate you from your existing software into Locate, connected to QuickBooks, add in all of your shopping cart integrations or shipping integrations, um, basically set it all up, migrate you to it, train you on it, and, and get you up and running. Um, and so that's what we do as a locate consultant. Um, as I said, it's a minimum of $500 a month. It's $100 per user and they have a five user minimum. 
Um, and then it just goes up from there. Obviously, if you have 10 users or 20 users, it's all just based on that $100 per user. But again, they don't charge anything additional for integrations like pretty much every other software out there does. So you're just paying for the platform. You're not paying to run your business. You're obviously going to pay to get it set up. But that's a one-time fee when that's all said and done. And a typical migration takes us, depending on how large you are, how many integrations you have, anywhere between 20 and 40 hours at 225 an hour. So it's between 4,500 and $9,000 in consulting time to get it up and running. If you're currently on Fishbowl, we can directly import data, your Fishbowl database through our imports module um, and completely pull in uh, your Fishbowl database. So for Fishbowl users, we can essentially cut them over from Fishbowl on one day and have them up and running on Locate on the next day and bring in your historical information from Fishbowl, your sales, um, purchases, and even open sales orders and purchase orders. With QuickBooks, we can kind of do that, but there's a little bit more machinations that have to go into play in order to do those imports. Um, but it allows us to get people up and running relatively quickly. Uh, now, if you have EDI integrations, those can take a little bit longer to plan out and get integrated. Um, but for the most part, if you just are working with their standard integrations, it's really plug and play to get them up and running once the system's ready to go. And so again, we can do a, you know, a, a private detailed demo for you for those things um, so that you can see how it would work for you and then get costs to you on doing that. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, well, there are no other questions that have come in over the last couple of minutes here. So if you had any final words, Andrew, I'll, I'll leave it to you and then I'll take it back to close us out. Nope, that's good. Why don't we uh, leave it at that? And if anybody has any follow up questions, they can just email us. Great. Thank you so much. So with that, I will uh, take things back here and Again, as Andrew said, if you have questions or if you're watching this on demand and something has piqued your interest, do reach out to us. Um, you can either email myself or Andrew directly or just send an email to sales at ootvtechnology.com. Coming up for Technology Tuesdays, we have our other co-founder, Lisa McCarthy, is going to do a presentation next week on what's new in QuickBooks 2019. So we're excited to have her on with us. It's really nice to close out the year with our our two co-founders, Andrew today and then Lisa next week. Um, and then our schedule for Technology Tuesdays for 2019 is really taking off. We're going to focus a lot on what we do here at Out of the Box Technology, kicking off the new year um, with an All About Us Tech Tuesday and then a feature on our event app later in the month. So again, those are all free webinars to you. Feel free to register for those. Invite your friends. We'd love to uh, see you again. And just to reiterate our contact information, if you have ideas for an upcoming Technology Tuesday, if you have an app or a solution that you want us to feature, please email me and we'll be sure to get you on the schedule. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us. Andrew, thanks for presenting today and we wish you all a great week.